Hold on a second. Hold on. My audio is not hearing the sound effects coming out of OBS, and I need to be able to hear that. Give me one second here, folks. I'll get this thing started. Yeah, a little bit of a hiccup. There's OBS. Should be here. Dun, 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 Come on, scroll, you little piece of... We're almost there, folks. We'll get started. Yeah, I know. I started the show already, but it's not giving me the sound out. It should. Oh, come on, OBS. Give me one more second, everybody. I want to be able to hear this stuff. Audio output. It should be going to the f- my projector, but it's it's not. All right, let me just go ahead and start this. Screw it. Here we go, everybody. Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending on where and when you're watching this broadcast. I'm Thomas Fessler, my friends, and this is Disclosure Tonight. Happy frickin' Saturday, everybody. Saturday, March 30th, 2024. The day where we turn our clocks back to GMT time for 10 p.m. to go ahead and start up the show, to make it for all of our friends in the U.K., to go ahead and talk about those things that our government doesn't want to, to talk about those things from science fiction yes friends talk about those things well you know from the x-files what things we talking about we're talking about the things that you can go out and see over your house in some evenings but you just need to go outside and look up we're talking about good old-fashioned ufos here in disclosure tonight and we still call them that for a good reason why because there's a word for it in every single language around the world throughout perpetuity who in the heck knew so as our federal government continues their 77 year war against the extraterrestrial presence. How do we know, friends? Oh, just take a look. It's all a military operation. Whether it's the Navy chasing them through the air or under the sea, or the Air Force chasing them through the air to figure out where they're crashed, to pull out their bodies, to use their DNA in combination with ours, and to take their technology to use for our weapons of mass destruction. Yes, folks, that's why we come together on Disclosure tonight many nights a week, and that's why we're here today. Why? Because we're talking about the state of disclosure in 2024 where it's been where it's headed and how the heck we're all going to get there as a community yes that's why (laughs) that's why we can't wait around for those idiots in the white house to tell us the truth because they're not going to or those bozos in the dod who work for those idiots in the white house that's why you'll be coming together with myself thomas fessler all of our friends in the chat and our community in the back for yet another episode of disclosure tonight yes couldn't hear a drip of the music. It was going on. Just saying it based on the pictures over there. I've done it enough times. But welcome, everybody. Happy Saturday. Hope, happy Easter weekend, everybody. Hopefully you had a, a good Friday, a good, good Friday. And hopefully you'll be coming together with family or friends. So uh, it should be relatively fu- a fun evening and a great afternoon for everyone who is involved well let's go ahead and take a look before we get too far and see who the heck we have in the back let me go ahead and bring up our participants and find some sound effects that i can actually hear where are we at thomas let's find the drums there we go i can finally hear something again how about that let's go ahead and welcome in brennan england chameleon uk charles kerr the charles kerr made it here welcome charles good to see you my friend oh we got Christine Lynn. We've got a troll in the audience by the name of Dr. Stephen M. Greer. I do not think we need to check. Is this the real Stephen Greer? No, it isn't. Tell anybody about it. I saw. All right, there you go. EBE8 is here along with Eric Roth and the Gurus. Although Stephen Greer could be, you know, why oh, why oh, fools. You never know, my friend. EBE8 is here along with Eric Roth and the Gurus. Fast Mama Jama's here and Fernando. Fernando, welcome, my Fernando friend. How you doing today? Fox Moldering's here, along with Jan, J. Cat, Kathy, Kelly Bro with those piercing blue eyes. Love you, Kelly. Uh, would love to talk to you sometime. Who else do we have out there? We got Liliana Chuna, Laura Campbell just popped in. Good to see you, Laura. Metal Gaming all the way from Denmark. Mike Disclosures here from the East Coast somewhere. Uh, <laughs> Nathan Forrest around, along with Neil Carr, Paul, Paul Demon. Got two Pauls here. Uh, uh, reality check. Good to see a Hollywood Herald. Rough Freddy is here along with Ruth Kleiber. Good to see you, Ruth. You're new. Welcome to the show, my dear lady. Thora Pank, who's here along with TK 
Tom King, the monster Tom King, who's a sky watcher out of uh, Arizona. Good to see you, Tom. Tony D's here along with Wild Cat Mahone. How about that? Got a great audience. But it's not just about the audience, my friend. No. Sometimes it's about our friends that we have in the back. There's our friends in the back that have helped make Disclosure tonight what it's been for the long time we've been on. After I rejigged it once, which there may be a second time rejigging this again, let's go ahead and welcome our friends in the back. Who am I talking about? Who's back there now? Well, let's go ahead and welcome in. As long as the volume's not too loud, it's not. Let's go ahead and welcome in our dear friend, Andy W., also known as Yell Tommy Tanker, when he's in the chat. Welcome, Andy. How you doing, my friend? Hey, Thomas. Hi, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm rocking new headphones tonight, so couldn't keep the other ones in. So, yeah. Thank doing you for good. Being, thank you for tired. Be, yeah. Oh, I understand. It's a little late by you, but not too late. It's 10 o'clock now, isn't it? Yeah. Has the time changed? Uh, no, no, Are we back? Not no, no. Next up uh, in five hours. Five hours. So it's still nine o'clock by you. Yeah, it took my daughter out for a bike ride today, so I'm not used to it. There you go, my friend. Wonderful to have you here, though. Uh, also coming to us from an, someplace else outside the United States is our dear friend all the way from New Zealand, Mr. Glenn Forbes. Welcome back, Glenn. Gl great to have you here. Thanks, Thomas. And, uh, you know, I'm very serious. And um, so I'm wearing my Easter hat tonight, uh, and that's mainly for Shelly. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Loved a little octopus on there. Hey, you know, you know there's an alien on your head? Because if, if you look at all the species on the planet, the one that's probably more related to being an alien is what's on your head, octopus, because they is have... Is there actually something on my head? <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the seriousness, <laughs> friend. It's it's it's, it's well, well over-welcomed. Also want to welcome in our friend coming from Oregon. Well, I used to call it Borgen. It's not boring anymore because Neil Carr is there. Welcome, Neil. Hey, I'm really digging your Her Bob works in the Tijuana Brass uh, intro music. That's great. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. You know it. Also in the back, we've got our dear friend coming from Southern California. It's the place you ought to be. Let's welcome in Faze Will. Welcome, William. Hey, Thomas. Good to be here. Good, uh, good to be here with you, Mike. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes, also in the back, we've got our dear friend and maybe your daughter as well to boot. Let's go ahead and welcome in our wonderful Rachel Smith. How you doing, Rachel? Hi, Thomas and Chad. Looking forward to another stimulating conversation today. Oh, I'm going to have to get off the vibrator Kelly, we for love that you, one. honey. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Also want to welcome in our dear friend, Hollywood Harold, also known as Reality Check. How's it going, Harold? It's going well, Thomas. I finally guessed right, and I got the got the gray hoodie on today. And nice. Tin foil hat. Oh, it's more than a tin foil hat. That is like a glitter hat. I'll take it yeah, though. Yeah, it's a fa fancy one. Yeah. Yeah, yep. fancy schmancy. I love it. Thank you for coming in, Harold. Also in the back, we've got our dear friend Shelly Montgomery. How's it going, Shelly? Well. Oh my Thomas. gosh, it's going great. great. Yeah, so. I want to tell everyone here. Thomas and crew, you guys rock. If you want to get to the truth, DT is a place to be. Thank you very much, Shelly. Appreciate you being here, my dear lady. And that wraps us back on the on the list too. Well, let's turn this off and get to Mike. 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 Disclosure. How the heck are you, my friend? And he just left the meeting. He's he just left <laughs> us. <laughs> He heard a sound effect and he kicked the fuck out. So how about that? What do you usually say, Harold? Drink. <laughs> Maybe got it. Drink it, my friends. Happy Saturday. Let's have a fun time. Oh, what did I do with the chat? I didn't even set up the chat in the right way that I should have set up the chat. Well, it should be here. Oh, oh there it is there. And I need to set, uh, let me do one more thing so I can bring up the auto chat again. It makes my life easier. All right. Uh, 20,000 people. There we go. I've got the chat reality check popping in saying, hi, Kathy. There we go. All right. So that is now working. It's a interesting Saturday to say the least. Um, not a lot's been going on at the land of disclosure. We'll talk about that in a second because there is one interesting video clip, <laughs> a good one. Of Matt Ford hanging out at the Anomalous uh, podcast, 
think I was just writing these guys a message saying, hey, I'm going to use a clip from your video. Please don't strike me, but I'm going to play it now. I'll send it off in a second. Neil, I think everyone is going to have a good laugh at this one. Um, not quite expected where it was going to be. It's a good one. So let's see if I can get the desktop video up and going. There we are. Let's go ahead and bring this in. I think you'll enjoy this one. Let me make sure I can jump into video full. All right. Oh, we got it. Let's let's go with this way. Here we go. Again, Matt Ford on the uh, Anomalous podcast. Let's have some fun with it. All right. So, uh, in the community now that sorry, Matt, I've that's amassed... not a dildo you're getting out of that box, is it? Oh God, I was gonna say what is in the box. I'm, I'm so curious. It's a Mitch McConnell dildo. <laughs> Oh my god, yes, we're probably getting, we may get hit for copyright on this music. We gotta have some fun with it. Yes, it was not to, it was not expected, was it, Neil? <laughs> I had to bring you back on camera because I loved your expression. Let's go ahead and play okay. a little bit uh -oh. more. Uh-oh, uh-oh. The thing's shaking. Dude, I always knew Mitch McConnell was a dick, but he was he's such a dick that they actually made a Mitch McConnell dildo. It's got his uh go Matt camera, go. it's got his name there and uh yeah and it actually looks like him down to his turkey neck <laughs> i got this off of john greenwald's sex toy website You're actually, shitting me. I'm joking. oh my god oh, you hear that man. he got it from john greenwald's sex toy website you know john greenwald actually blocked me back in the day because some other people were saying that on the broadcast and it kind of went along with it it's been put out there by uplifting tweets but he didn't like that so he blocked me let's see if he blocks matt ford as well this is just okay so we got it from the let me rewind a little bit we'll hear that again Actually, I'm joking. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, that would really kill me, dude. I'd yeah. log out. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, and it comes complete with, get fucked by your government. <laughs> Senate, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is fucking Americans with his anti-abortion stance, and he's doing it without a consent. Uh, help fund reproductive freedom and tell Mitch McConnell to go fuck himself along the way. So... Oh. I give this to the uh, hundredth caller. So uh, there you go. There you go. And, and I, I have to say, I don't know for a fact that uh, John Greenwald has a sex toy uh, uh, website. Uh, I've never seen it, but I've been told by a lot of people that would know about things. Uh, maybe Mitch McConnell told me as well uh, that you know that that's one of his side gigs. But I, you know what? Knock yourself out. No judgment there. There, there so, you go. Neil. Actually, Shelly hey. has her hand up on this one. Shelly, yes. <laughs> oh, Shelly has something to say about that one. Go, Matt, go, and just tell him what a bunch of fucking... Oh, oops. Well, Matt, you know what? If it's rubbery... <laughs> oh, gotta have fun yeah. with it. Gotta have fun yeah, with it. Yeah, I, I would have fun with this one because you know what? Uh, Shelly, you have YouTube yeah! on in the background, so we're hearing an echo coming through on your voice here, my dear lady. There you go. Rachel Smith, you have your hand up. I just have one question. Does the uh, item on the screen come with some free Avi loop? Oh, yeah. Our, <laughs> our, our unofficial sponsor of Disclosure tonight, Avi Lube. There you go. Just for your pleasure. Apparently, maybe it doesn't, but that would be a a great combination. Although we probably should have the uh, Sean Kirkpatrick dildo. That'd be a better one. But you know what? As he fucks you, ufology. That would be a good one, honestly. That'd be a very small one. <laughs> Here we go. I found it. I can't even focus on it. That it's so. Oh. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, where are we at? Where are we at? Let's get back into the studio. We lost Mike somehow. Something's happening in New York. You never know. Let's get back into the studio chat. So, where are we at? Where are we going? What's going on? Well. Probably busy busting some debunkers in the streets of New York. Maybe, possibly, could be. 
Glenn, you have your hand up. Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, two parts of this question. Um, what did everyone think of Oswaldo last night? And big question mark there. And also, um, the new eclipse coming along. Um, there's a lot of talk around that. Uh, maybe people know or can explain to me or know something else about it. Yeah. Last time we had the eclipse going across the United States, we're probably talking six years ago at least with Jerry, eight years ago. 20, back in 2017, a while ago, wherever the eclipse was going through the United States, they had a phenomenal inundation of people who all came and wanted to see the eclipse going across the United States. And because of that, gas stations that would normally get gas once a week immediately ran out of gas. Grocery stores that usually get supplies every week or two of food. Compl I mean, we're talking about places out in the middle of nowhere, but that's where everyone's going, is little towns in the middle of nowhere because they want to get and see it. So what's going on? Gas supply is running out. Food supplies are running out. And more importantly, when there are so many people in an area where the cellular networks are maybe used to a couple hundred people, maybe four or 500 people being used at the same time, all of a sudden you have 10,000, 20,000 people, maybe more, all showing up. And you know what happens, Glenn? Yeah, the cellular that? networks, the data networks, all get completely inundated and they can't handle the traffic. So everyone's losing cell phone connection, including the people who usually have it. And now they don't have it. Um, that's true. It's, I, it's I, I uh, work for, uh, I did like billing or something for, for a cell phone for a company Sprint. And their cell phone towers, it's true. In areas where there wasn't that much volume, they wouldn't put the larger capacity equipment there because they're trying to like save money or something. They're like, why overdo what, you know, what's not needed. So what you're saying is absolutely true. These places have like only expect low, you know, volume. So they don't have the, the, the capacity to, uh, to take. So build stuff. out the network to handle the capacity of the people that are there. So coming out of that, what's going on? They're telling people who were, this is going to be at, Go out and buy groceries. Buy a couple weeks of groceries because the shelves are going to be emptied. If you have, you have a vehicle, fill it up with gas ahead of time because if that's going on, you may not be able to get more gas like everybody else that's there. And I believe when this last time it happened, there were a lot of people after the event happened that were stranded. So there has been a lot of planning, a lot of information going on in localities across that path of the... Uh, so, south, central, Midwest, going to, yeah, and going to the hey. East Coast a little bit of the path of this. And they're basically telling everybody, stock up, get what you need. Now, they're also going and deploying National Guard from each particular state. Why? Well, you think a cop, who uh, the police force, and usually handles 200 or 500 people in a little small area, is now going to be able to deal with 20 or 30,000 plus more of people? It's not a reality. They can't. So they're deploying the National Guard along it. It's not that potentially we're going to be getting a terror attack going on. That's not going to happen because we have a, not only do we have a, eclipse going on a total eclipse we also have a comet going by in the near point and it's co also coming on the last day before the end of ramadan not that there would be any reason for any people who respect ramadan or anything to that extent to go ahead and come across our southern border and get situated so when things go bad they can do something big I'm not would, saying that's going to happen. It. It's always a possibility, but you never know. I would look at sorry, it. Neil, like, I just wanna, sorry, Neil. I just want to jump in here. Thanks, Thomas, for your uh, – you obviously researched this pretty um, extensively, but I heard of the grapevine that NASA has sent off a whole pile of rockets, maybe three. Um, and I don't know what that has to do with anything, but does anyone else know? They've got a lot of money and possibly – 
got a husky popping up here out of the green screen. Uh, possibly going and trying to do additional research. Uh, they're always looking at seeing how they can deploy things, I guess, for satellites. That's an interesting one. I don't think we've had that up there in the past. Now, were these put up there specifically just to monitor this event? Or these satellites are already deployed out there that they're going to be double tasking them to go ahead and look up in the sky? Glenn? We don't Sorry, know. yeah, thanks, uh, Thomas. Um, no, I heard the three, they sent three um, rockets up. Um, and I've got to research a little bit further, but I heard that they sent three up. I don't know if it was from Vandenberg or wherever, but um, I think Rachel's got a hand up as well. Yeah, Sorry, Rachel, thanks. you guys take it for one second. I need to go let Moose uh, out really quick. He's he's coming to me saying I need to go pee pee. So let me go ahead and take care of this. Okay, Andy, go, are Rachel. You there? Yeah, um, I was you guys just run it in the back. Thomas I'll be right correct. back, everybody. Thanks. Thomas you, is correct. correct. I personally think that's why there's so much hype around this eclipse because there's multiple things going on at the same time, like the P. Palms Brooks comment that they're calling the devil comment. And yes, NASA is lost, launching four rockets from Virginia during the eclipse. Virginia. Plus there's going to be two planets that are visible during the eclipse. I think it's just a conglomeration of many things. And like Thomas said, the sudden influx of people into small towns of which yeah. I live one. So, and I mean, all of that together, I would is just it, like, they were, a lot of hype. Like they're facilitating the event, like they're hosting, they're, they're just standing by to make sure that things run smoothly, uh, come to the assistance of anybody that needs assistance. I mean, it's just, it's a good idea. Uh, I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's a positive, they're, you know, Trying to be prepared, just in case. Cool. Thanks, Neil. I think um, Andy has his hand up. Thanks, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you know, we, we have an event uh, about 30 miles from where I live, um, maybe a little bit more. It's called a little thing called Glastonbury. Okay. Uh, you might have heard of it. It's a, it's a bit of a well-known music event. Um, they have over the, the course of this uh, this um, uh you know, event, they have over 200,000 people turn up to a little farm, basically. It is a farm in the middle of Somerset. And, you know, that's an awful lot of people. The thing is, they cater for those 200,000 of people. Um, the only thing it lets it down is if it rains and it becomes like the song. But um, you've got here, you've got places that cater for maybe a couple of hundred people all the time you know and, and you've potentially got you know you know god knows how many people turning up you know a million people will just say want to see this event you know there's a lot of potential for things to go wrong and i don't mean in you know terrorism or things like that but just in the general that, that thomas says that you know they're advising the locals to, to stock up on food you know, things will sell out, fuel will, you know, gas will, will run out in no time at all. They've only got so many, you know, gas stations, um, things like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not reading anything, you know, if, if, if they're deploying National Guard, I, I think it is purely just in case issues like this happen and they, they need to they need to ship in fuel or, or food or whatever have you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not reading it as anything untoward in any other way. So we're not we're not talking about anything nefarious potentially that could be going on. We're talking about a scenario that we've got a a solar event that's going on, a solar and lunar event where we've got the moon passing in front of the sun and we're getting that uh, eclipse that's going on. And it's something that goes on on a regular basis, so it's not anything new. We do have that additional comet that's going to be in the path where people are going to be able to get a better view of that potentially. So I'll be interested to see what comes out of it, how it overall goes. Moose, you cannot go on my desk, boy. Here we go. Um, Glenn, you have your hand up, my friend. You think, thanks, Andy and Thomas, for that. Um, you've put a bit of insight into there. But um, just through the grapevine, you're hearing that there's going to be some 
uh, I don't know, UAP related incident that's happening. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that. But Andy Glastonbury, is that where the, uh, I'm not familiar, um, even though my parents come from England, but I'm not too familiar with the area. Where does the crop circles happen? That's more around uh, Salisbury Plain. That's probably 30 or 40 miles away. Um, if if not a bit more, actually, yeah, it's 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 you know, you, Glastonbury is where you've got the famous tour, which is it's a very spiritual Sorry. place. Um, but that I've never heard of any crop circles appearing around that area. Okay, no, I just thought like um, you know how we have these ley lines intersecting, um, and there's a whole new conversation we can have about that. But with these ley lines intersect, you know, you got Mel's Hole. And um, I think it runs here to that. Now, as whole, if you don't look it up, it's really interesting. And the um, U.S. government took control of the uh, Mel's ranch, and he couldn't get back there. So if you've got any – anyone wants to have a look at a good story, look at Mel's Hole. They um, put down, like, thousands of kilometres, or I can't – don't quite me on the number, but – it was like a gateway or um and that's what i'm getting insinuating at andy is that we have these ley lines that intersect has that got anything part of the eclipse or you know what i i, I don't think so um I, I did look up a map of the ley lines and i'm not even sure that any intersect intersect glastonbury um it, it, it's it's i've not really got any real understanding of why it's so spiritual um i've never really looked into it um you've got the, the tour which is um it's a world famous it's a basically a a, 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 a hill um with it's a it's a church tower on the top of it um and it stands in the middle of what of the somerset levels which are um an area of reclaimed marshland um it's very mystical if, if 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 the mists come in and this looks like a like an island in the middle of the sea there's some great photos out there if you ever look up and this this sort of top of this hill is just jutting out of this what looks like a, the sea um yeah i'm not sure if any ley lines run along there or not um interesting yeah. Interesting concept, a conversation to that degree. Not sure it's something uh, definitely worth looking into, if we can. Peter Panda, who has, may have some insight on uh, NASA's uh, uh, thoughts on this one. Uh, Neil. Not Neil, I'm sorry. Uh, Peter. Uh, yeah, I was just you know, going to mention with the, the eclipse there, I wouldn't worry too much about uh, any nefarious events going off there uh, it's really just a huge astronomical event and if you do happen to be in the united states anywhere near uh that path of totality you should just realize that that's about like a maybe a 50 mile wide path and if you're not directly under that specific thin red line you're not going to see a total eclipse Right. So you can see a little piece being taken out of the sun, but you're not going to have uh, sunset happen directly above you in 360 degrees and have that unique experience where all the animals start acting differently. Birds start uh, chirping and singing. Insects either go quiet or start activating. And you can look up and see stars in the daytime and planets in the daytime and even stars that are behind the sun a little bit because you can actually see the curvature of gravity coming around the sun so light from the stars that are behind the sun that you wouldn't be able to see are going to be bending around the sun and the gravity and coming back into your line of view which is how they prove general relativity that was one of the tests that einstein did of course uh, so it's a it's a really major event, and the next one in the United States, it's a total solar eclipse because not all solar eclipses are total solar eclipses. Some of them are annular eclipses where the moon doesn't quite block out the sun, uh, so you don't get that shadow effect. But the next total solar eclipse is in 2024 in the United States, I believe February, so 21 years if you miss this one. So if you can get to this, I would recommend you get some ISO certified solar eclipse viewing glasses uh, to look at the sun at any rate. But if you can get to the path of totality, you can actually look at that without your solar glasses once the total eclipse 
starts and it's about a three minute or so event and the speed of the moon shadow actually sweeping over you is going to be somewhere around 2000 miles an hour or a little bit more. So if that gives you the idea of the scale of the moon, you're having a 2000 mile an hour shadow plus sweeping across you and it takes three and a half minutes to get from one side to the other. So you'll be in a shadow that's moving at maybe 2,300 miles an hour for three and a half minutes. And then you can kind of get the scale of just how big the sun is and how big the moon is and how small all the people are. And if you look around you, which I would completely recommend you looking not just at the sun, but in the front, behind, at the landscape, observe everything you can, take it all in, hope that it's a clear, clear day. Uh, Look around in the sky at stars, at planets, and sure, look for some UFO activity, UAP activity up there if you can. Why not, right? Uh, it's a great act, great opportunity. But I wouldn't worry about it as far as something you could, should fear. The only thing you should fear is missing it if you can get there. Uh, yeah. So there are and some Like you're saying, you it's a look. thin line of where it's at, so there's going to be a lot of people all trying to get to that one spot. They'll be lining the roads, they'll be doing everything, pulling over wherever they can. So it is clearly a spectacle up in the sky that a lot of people want to see. So yeah, um, oh, nothing nefarious. Absolutely, this and I, I believe that you're legally allowed to steal up to two cars to get to a total solar eclipse. I'm not totally sure on that law, but I think that's on the book somewhere. Oh, that's a rough one. That's a rough one. Interesting insight, though. I appreciate you talking about where we're at, what we're looking at, what's going on, uh, some of the physics behind it. A really great conversation. Neil Carr, you have your hand up, my friend. Yeah, thank you. Um, and, and just touching on uh, um, what Peter Pan was saying, uh, I mean, um, totality the last time was uh, like in Eugene, Oregon. And Portland, it got pretty dark. I mean, it it got significantly uh, dark. I mean, not totally dark, but the it it, it definitely felt like uh, twilight. You know, twilight or something. Um, it was really yeah. interesting. Uh, and then I just wanted to challenge uh, Andy uh, with his new night vision goggles. Uh, mate, uh, go to um, where the crop circles are. Go out there one night and just hang out and see if you see anything. Maybe you like you might chance upon uh seeing one made uh that would be what i would do <laughs> if i had those things i'm, I'm ordering some myself uh, Andy, and thank you yeah I'll, well, I'll see if i can afford the fuel <laughs> it's rather expensive here and and yeah lack in time but we'll see yeah absolutely it's things to figure out it's things for us to get there it's more importantly just if you're near it enjoy it if you're driving to it Enjoy it. But if you're going to be going ahead and taking a look, it's important to go ahead and make sure you have protection goggles to go ahead and look at it. And remember, even if you have your iPhone, putting your iPhone trying to record it can actually potentially damage the CCD sensor in your iPhone. So just be careful of what you're doing when you're when you're getting to that point. But I think majority of the people considering it Saturday, March 30th, were less than nine days away from the event. I think there are a lot of people that are overall prepared for this. And uh, I wish the best luck to them. Glenn, you have your hand up. Thanks, Thomas. Yeah, um, no, it's great insight from everyone. Um, it's just that there's been uh, rumors filtering around, as you probably know. But um, anyway, um, I just want to sidetrack a little bit. I don't know if you guys or what you think of Linda Moulton Howe, but she just um, had, she had a lot of pieces of um, metal from a, disc shaped or a wedge shaped um uap that was in the late 40s that dropped down and she got a whole pile of samples through art bell on coast to coast and she just presented over a period of two weeks um just the findings and and what she got rebuffed on and um does anyone have any insight on that or is this credible or is it just farce it's hard to tell. Linda has a lot of information. As we know, Linda is over 80 years old, probably closer to 81 at this point. The levels of uh, 
due diligence that came out of her reporters uh, of her age and of her time is a bit different than today. So she does bring a lot of good information out. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes there's good evidence. Sometimes it's hard to read between the lines. So as, as we hear from a lot of the different UFO ufologists out there, it's all just a matter of looking to the big picture, sometimes maybe not getting to the details because sometimes it's hard to know whether the details or not are exactly accurate. If that makes sense. Yeah. Thanks, Thomas. Appreciate that. No, yeah. just that, that she brought out um, these metal samples and she had them independently tested. Obviously they were mailed to Art Bell in the nineties, late nineties. And um, the, apparently a sergeant, we don't know who it is. Well, um, th those site. things that she got from Art Bell were actually sold off, I believe to uh, TTSA. Yep. yep. To, um, and in selling the, those to the TTSA, law. those materials are now in the hands of the of the army. Yeah, and I believe um, uh, what's that for his name? Uh, he uh, basically he's in the same he's in the Soul Foundation. Uh, Hal put off. He did testing on it, and apparently they found waveguides, gravity waveguides that um, insinuate that because that was part of the long. Um, insinuated that it was not manufactured on Earth, um, and the metal um, samples that came back were 99 point something percent pure aluminium and and bismuth and and whatsoever. But, right, but the yeah. interesting thing about about the materials that are in them, it's like the aluminum that's in there. Its purity is so high, which we're not going to be able really to get on this planet. It's how the aluminum was put together, meaning that the objects themselves were put together in a method that's not. Uh, they're not made out of minerals. The actual aluminum is made out of isotopes. Correct. They were actually formed, they said, in a zero-gravity environment, which we right. don't have on Earth. Correct. Which go ahead and try to uh, debunk that one. <laughs> yeah, you that's can't. pretty hard. I mean, I think that's pretty solid proof that, you know, we've got some good evidence there. I don't know what anyone else thinks. I, I I think it, uh, Neil, go ahead. Yeah, um, just not so much on that, but on what um, Glenn, you were asking earlier about our conversation last night. Um, after last night's show, uh, we we spoke with Oswaldo. Some some you know, kind of like the the yeah, the, but the conversations that were on after the chat are kind of considered. Uh, privilege to a degree, so different things that go I'm on in that. I know Osvaldo was making sure that people weren't going to go and repeat some of this stuff, so I appreciate yeah, you bringing I'm... on comments on that, but we also have to respect the sanctity of the back conversation because there were some worries right. that some of the ladies potentially would take some of that information and start spreading it out. So I was just going to say it, it got uh, kind of heated uh, because of uh, just trying to wrap our minds around what it could be and um, it, it's not an easy topic. Uh, that's all I was going to say. Well, it, um, it, it's really hard, right? When someone brings up a little piece of information and they start talking about it, right? But after they go ahead and they talk about it, they say, oh, I can't give you the answers. Oh, I can't go ahead and talk about that. In that respect, it makes it um, difficult for those who are part of the conversation where you say, hey, wait a minute, you were just talking about this. Now are you saying you can't. Why are you going ahead and dangling this in front of us, right? But yeah. But yeah. Glenn? It was just hard to dec decipher, and and I'm taking the sanctity of the uh, after conversation into respect here, but it was just hard to, ci to decipher what was true and what was false because he was obviously communicating with Mike uh, and Mike's not here to defend himself, so or to comment. But um, I just want to know if this guy was credible or not. That's all. Um, I don't know. It's hard to tell. But then again, with respect to all the different claims that Osvaldo made when he was here on the show or afterwards, um, that's why I have a disclaimer. I show before the start of every show for the main reason a lot of people especially in talking about UFOs dealing with UFOs and everything that goes along with it it can go one way or another and I literally put that out there as a protection for myself because although we have many 
people coming on, they may be making grandiose claims. I don't want to stand behind and say, <laughs> don't let all that follow on me. He's the guest of the program who we welcome in to talk about the situation, if that makes sense, Glenn. Yeah, no, I totally understand it, Thomas. Thanks for that. And um, I totally understand your disclaimer since you uh, said it earlier. But also, um, I think consciousness, and I believe what Tia was saying, I think that's got a massive part of this um, that we just don't understand. Um, anyway. I, I liked what he was saying about his call for activism, uh, is, uh, that we could get out in front of our television studios and, uh, and beat the faces and the voices of those who want this uh, issue resolved, uh, this disclosure issue, or we want we want to show our support to our uh, elected representatives that uh, we believe in this, uh, they should uh, fight for this. You know, that's it. That's it. That was the, probably the best message that he had last night, I think. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. It's just one of those things you need to go ahead and take a look at and understand and just take everything we deal with and with a grain of salt. Now, getting back to one of the main topics of tonight is talking about disclosure in 2024. I wish Mike was here for this one. Not sure what happened again with him losing the broadcast. Let me see if I can call him and get him on the ring here for this conversation. It's kind of an important one. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me see if he answers. Yeah, nothing like calling someone when they're on stream and trying to figure out what happened. Let's see if there's an actual answer. Mm. But then again, it is Easter weekend. I, I, I... Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Yep. Yeah, Mike didn't charge his phone. Apparently, last night's chat went to like two people. 1 a.m. Pacific, which was 4 o'clock in the morning Eastern time, and Mike didn't charge his phone, up, apparently, so he's trying to get his phone back up again. It'll be interesting to say. That. I, I'm sure there were a lot of people hanging out in the back chat last night. It's an interesting one where a lot of conversations go on. But uh, getting down to the topic of what I've been kind of bringing up is um, – about was in January, beginning of January, I shifted to having to get up at five o'clock in the morning, three days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then uh, we've had some different days we've been taken off on the show because getting up at 5 a.m. by the time the show starts here at six, I'm shot. And a lot of people have said I look like hell. And honestly, a lot of these days I'm just pushing through it feeling like hell. But in addition to that, of where things are at for this is, I hate to say it, disclosure in 2024 is it has been a nothing burger to the biggest extent. Oh, let me turn off the chat. It's getting nasty out there. People are implicating themselves and other stuff. If you're going to feel sorry for yourself, please leave it out of the chat because I'm having to take the whole chat down at this point, Shelly. Vinny's not here today, Shelly. Uh, Vinny was going to be here. Unfortunately, Vinny didn't realize this was Easter weekend and he had family responsibilities to go ahead and take care of. But that's just Saturday. That's just today. Looking at overall where disclosure is right now, it's been dead for six months. And we've been following the regular schedule of what we've been going on, what we've been doing. But it becomes more and more difficult when you're out of the house for, let's say, 12 hours a day, you get back, you want to try and put stuff together, and the amount of time that you would usually use to putting together a show, there's nothing to report as far as news. And as everybody knows, Disclosure Tonight, for the longest time, has focused on the latest breaking news, what's going on on that day, what we can go ahead to do to cover it if that makes sense. But when you're trying to get do that and spend the time, like for instance, today, for today's show, I spent close to two hours going through Twitter. You know how many stories I found, Andy, to go ahead? And Mike's back. Hey, Mike, you're back. Yes, sir. I'm just looking at the chat. What the hell is going on? 
Everyone's talking about the back chat from last night. After the we were talking the a little bit about it, not that much, and I tried to keep the conversation from what happened in the back chat out of the show. So that's right. where some of the conversation that's going on. But it's turned into an AA meeting for Shelly. So I've turned, yeah. off, I've turned off the auto chat because it's not appropriate, because it doesn't go along with the show. No, I agree. I understand. Yeah. So we need to keep things professional and, um, yeah, move forward. Yeah. So now, this conversation Fox Moldering to says, to- James Fox is close on the movie being done. That movie will move the needle. Maybe. That movie is not going to come out until se- August, September, October time frame, Mike? September, October, and it's behind a paywall, Thomas. Yeah, it's behind a paywall. We've got that. We've got the new uh, the documentary that's going to have potentially some whistleblowers and Lou Elizondo in it, right? And that's going to be coming out earlier in the year, maybe. Who's who's the director behind that one, Mike? Dan Farah. Dan Farah, yeah. We've got that one that's going to be there. We also have the uh, Lou Elizondo's book, which is still being held hostage potentially by Dobser. Not sure exactly when that's going to come out. So we have some things that are going on, but more importantly, what's missing? We haven't had any hearings from the government, although we were supposed to have one following up after the one that we had with David Grush. That never happened. And guess what? It's not on the agenda right now. There is no hearing from the Senate to come out. And the last hearing we had from the Senate, all it was was uh, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand honestly being a patsy to Sean Kirkpatrick and pushing him up. So 2023 had some interesting things. I would say David Grush was the biggest thing to come out. We had the interview of David Grush on News Nation. Then we had the hearing. But since then, It's been quiet. There hasn't been action. Now we've got Matt Laszlo kicking out more crappy audio feeds that I can't hear, the back can't hear, that really if he's spending money on an organization, he's throwing out all these expenses of things he needs, clean up your fucking audio, buddy. You can't hear it. You can't understand. I know you talk about the ambiance of what's going on. If you're going to be doing that, invest in some fucking microphones. Seriously. Because if you want to be a news organization that's relying on audio clips, if you can't hear what people are saying because of the echoes or because the mics in your iPhone sucks, buy some fucking mics. <laughs> Let's be honest. Like, I had a bad camera issue. What do you do? You invest some money, you buy a camera. But if you're not willing to make that investment, there are utilities out there like oh, Adobe Audition. You can take it in. You can dial up that noise in the background, up or down, so you can hear people and what they're saying. Clean up your audio because it, you're coming out with some great pieces of information. But if people can't hear it, what's the point? <laughs> Glenn, you have your hand up. Yeah, I, I totally understand what you're saying. It's, uh, but I think a lot of medicinal cannabis may be involved there. Uh, that's a bit of a joke, really. No, but, it, um, it is a joke, but he does try, and he does have additional interns that he's paying to get stuff done. I mean, he even has a a list of expenses of what he spent out on stuff. I'm looking at some of these things. It's like where are the important things to spend out to get there. I mean, he's paying like 200 bucks for someone to help him put together a show on Discord. Why? It should be free or 150 bucks, whatever it is. Yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, but also, um, coming back to uh, just the grapevine and what we've all heard like last year in 2023, and you summarized it quite good, Thomas, is that we were going to get um, another whistleblower coming forward. And that's why I, um, I'm uh, a bit behind the scenes, of, uh, a bit behind the times, I mean, of what's been going on because I've been so busy. But um how's rick's advanced group going and i'm not sure but these are things that he may have some stuff coming up in may if they don't give an answer by may rick's group is going to try and move some stuff forward again that's going to be difficult especially to move the public needle because when you have things coming out i hate to say it you have things coming out from sean kirkpatrick and the dod he has been moving the needle on disclosure 
in the opposite direction. More importantly, the lack of new information, new people coming forward, new things going on in disclosure. There is no news a lot of night. And when you have a certain amount of time, I usually would set aside two hours. It's not a lot, but it's two hours to sit down and put together a live stream. I know you get done at the end of the two hours and you're still looking saying, what the hell am I going to cover tonight? But when you're trying to have a a nightly news broadcast and even you can see the new uh, number of people who are watching the show, whether it's my show, it's other shows that are out there who are doing it. The numbers are dropping off because the interest in the subject, I hate to say it is waning because of the lack of information the lack of movement that's coming from the government. Yes, I need a vacation, but it's can, more than I need I a vacation. Ask? Let me finish here, Glenn. Mike, uh, we Sorry. had a conversation on this earlier. Actually, you know, let's go through a couple people's hands in the back. Uh, Glenn, sure. let's go ahead, go to Neil, and then Christian and Ali, and then I've got some other stuff to talk about. Neil, go ahead. Yeah, um, I was just going to say, um, yeah, uh, we have Rick Doty who's talking about something in May. Um, I remind you guys, uh, maybe bring Jack Sarfati back on. He's been he's been talking lately. He's been that's some interesting stuff to say. Uh, maybe bring him back on. Maybe have Steve Mara come back another Saturday or something. Um, you know, bring some some interesting people on. You can get people we- in, but the reality mm-hmm. disclosure tonight is literally a talking about the disclosure effort that's going on. But the reality is we have a lot of personalities out there who are making the circuits. There's nothing new. Nothing. I wish it was different, but that's where we're at, Christian. Morales. Hey, can you hear me? Oh, we got you, buddy. All right, so I'm with you, Thomas. We're not, the, the situation does not look good, and, uh, you know, we got to be realistic here. Um, It's... uh. What ha- first of all, what happened to Dave uh David Grush's op ed? Nothing. That's strange. Um Schumer got got it. That was the first uh thing that told me uh this is not going the way we expected it to. But then uh you know you can see it's like a war in the in the national security. Some people want transparencies, some don't, but the, the people that uh that don't seem to uh they seem to be winning they have the media you know uh it's it's pretty bad right now the error report was a message to congress you know to back off or you know we're gonna ridicule you we're gonna stigmatize you and what that dude said was it doesn't matter your position in the government if you believe you're you're basically uh a crackpot which is so fucked up it pisses me off but uh you know, look at Gillibrand. Look at all these senators. They're all quiet. You know, they're like... Have we... You know, Rubio said some things when we had the craft that were out there that were over Dead Horse, Alaska, then over the Yukon, then over Maelstrom Air Force Base, North Dakota, and then it was finally potentially taken down over Lake Huron. We've never gotten information on that, and it's been quiet about all that stuff ever since, so... There is clearly a cover-up that's in play because if it's something like a a Russian plane or something going on that's going or something from China, they'll take that classified footage and bring it out the same day and send it to all the news agencies. But that's not going on with anything in, in hey, the world. Hey, one last thing I wanted to say to finish my point. Um, the after the we- weapon, not weapon, as Jeremy Corbell dropped his uh, his uh, documentary. Apparently something happened, a huge pushback. I don't know if it was the leaked footage, like an investigation. But think about this. The next week they went and they said the pushback is very real. News media, the Hill suddenly went super quiet, which which, which was pretty unusual due to that. The you know the the Soul Foundation videos came out. The documentary, there was things going on, and they just went quiet. All of a sudden, and the George Knapp was telling Corbell, like, guys, you know, the pushback, it's real. It's real, you know, and uh, then weaponized, it's done. And whether you like Jeremy Corbell or George Knapp, it doesn't matter. You know, there, what they did w- would move the needle forward a lot. And the fact that they're done should tell you that, you know, I don't know, it's not good. You know what I mean? That's all I got for now. 
Thanks, Christian. I appreciate that insight. Ali. Yeah, happy Easter, everyone. Uh, just to start with, um, uh, I want to tell, I want to, from my experience, everyone who says, you know, we have to be realistic is covering up for his own pessimism. And uh, you are expressing here a pessimism, and I think it's become uh, part of my role here to to enthusiast the uh, people to understand that uh, this ex this disclosure movement now it's like a tide wave. It's moving, and uh, we hit the pier uh, at the as the government uh, with. Um, you know, Kirkpatrick and this uh, ridiculous uh, debunking of uh, David Grush uh, testimony and so on. So, of course, uh, we have now, compared to uh, many years back, uh, and I'm kind of late, I, did, I, I had my experience last New Year's Eve, so I'm kind of new in uh, this UFO disclosure world, uh, but I'm keeping up with them um, uh, with the history as well. Uh, and we've never been stronger. There's never been more competent people engaged in this disclosure movement now. And I think we're in a kind of information war here. And of course, when you get the pushback from the government, as uh, happened now during the autumn, of course, you feel a little bit demoralized and your attack troops, then you take them back, you retreat, and you reorganize to wonder, uh, to, see, to find a new strategy, how to get, um, um, well, push your uh, troops, uh, the disclosure in this uh, even yeah. further. And yeah. I think if we compare how many was aware of this UFO disclosure, a question mark uh, uh, topic for three, four years ago, I think it's more than doubled since that. And people who got engaged and who listened to, who knew there was this hearing with uh, David Grush and so on, during that period and during that, um, yeah, when that topic was hot, people, if they, didn't, if you say now the the interest is going down, but still they have the experience and they know in the back of their head that this is an issue. New information will come, and I don't think, and I don't expect it, and we shouldn't not expect it to come from the mainstream media. It's going to come from my analysis and for how re I read it now. It's going to be with, within the uh, some of the big podcasts, uh, like Joe Rogan or Valuetainment or uh you know, what a, a rumor report or pdo or tucker carlson uh, that's where this topic is going to get uh, uh disclosed and from there maybe the mainstream media will pick it up if cia yeah. and fbi and all the others allow them to so we are winning you just have to be patient we and all have to be you. patient, but we all have to be realistic in how we're approaching this. Christian, last comment before I bring Mike in. Yeah. I just want to say, um, you know, mainstream media, uh, I think a lot of it is they're scared. I mean, you know, not everybody has the balls like, like Russ Colhart and all these guys that I respect so much, like all these whistleblowers, well as Hundo. A lot of these people um, care about their careers and all this, and they, they – you know, if if we could you if they could be like a group that starts like building behind the scenes and doing research, you know, and all that. But it, it's a it's a new cycle that moves fast, and there's so much things going on that it's easy for them. Uh, you know, I wonder how many of them don't even want to know. You know, like they suspect yeah. something's there, but you know, the the trend. The truth is that whoever is pulling the strings behind disclosure. You know the guys that don't want this to come out. I mean, what are what are their capabilities? I mean, what what, what are what can they do? 
you know? I don't care about the capabilities. Well, I don't well, give well, a fuck about you. what they can do. Uh, the biggest thing we all, and that's following the military side. Just focus on the craft. Focus on what these craft look like. Focus yeah, what on what these can, craft can do. What they can the real question, you, Christian, is family, what the fuck are, are they doing you? here? And that question has not been answered, and that we're not getting any close to it. So if all we're going to do is continue to fucking talk about the craft in the sky and look how fast they are, how they're there, how they can disappear, that's not getting anywhere. That's following the government narrative to a T. Yeah, I don't know that that's ever going to happen from the government, man. I really, I hope so that one day we get there, but I, I don't, I just don't have the, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Maybe from the people it will, we'll get those answers. And I think we will. James Fox and that, that sucks. Like, I feel like now it's up to like James Fox and Brandon Fugel and these slow disclosures, but from the government, man, I just, I don't see it. I'm sorry to be negative. I'll shut up for now. Well, it's not being negative. It's being realist. I mean, honestly, people are saying, chin up. Things will change. Have faith. Yes. But until they don't change, I've been having a conversation with Mike over the last couple of weeks. I'll be honest. My health right now, I've put this show ahead of it for, for years. And my health right now sucks. I'm the most out of shape. I've ever been in my entire life. And it's not just weight, but it's also issues going on with nerves in my body and everything else. And I have to go ahead and make a change because the amount of time that I would normally put towards the show to go ahead and gather information and get it there, I'm, go I'm burning through it. I go through two hours of time trying to find stuff for the show. And you know what I find lately? I finally found something. I finally found something that's worth showing, even though I searched for hours earlier today. Let me bring it up. Desktop video. Let's bring this up here. This is a UFO sighting that happened in Alexandria, Virginia, back in October 19th, 2023. However, this looks like the orbs I see fl flying over my house, or right in front of my house, I should say. Go ahead and play this clip going through here. Here you can see some orbs. It's the right color. It's the right kind of movement. It looks like about the right distance in the sky. We, we get these over here over the Pacific Northwest, at least where I live up in near Mill Creek, Washington, all the time. They're here. What are they doing? What's going on? Well, we've got some things. It's definitely not a Chinese lantern. There's something going on in the sky. He's going to zoom off in a second, and they're going to go ahead and show a jet that's a regular commercial airliner that's going by. He can probably hear that, but you're not going to hear any noise coming from these craft that are up there. What are they doing? Why are they here? That's the main question. Oh, look, there's a third one. How about that? And that one's even closer. You know, granted, Look at, again, no noise, no nothing going on. But there it is in the sky. It's something going on that we should all pay attention to. This is why I encourage people when I'm not on the show and, I, and, and many times go outside and look it up because you're never, you're never ever going to see something if you don't go outside and look up. How are they in the air? Yeah, how, why are they moving so slow? Why, didn't, why do they not make some noise? Forget all those things. The neighbor who's a whack job who lives next door actually said it perfectly when I was describing, hey, every so often we'll see these things flying across in the sky. His first question was, why are they, why are they here? What are they doing here? And that's the most important question that all of us need to answer. Now, granted, I'm happy I just I found this little video I could go ahead and share with the audience. But besides that, the information that I usually use to aggregate to go ahead and put together a nightly news show on a daily basis has dried up. We're in a disclosure drought at this point. And, because, and add to that, the amount of time that I would normally put into the show, which I'm not taking the time for myself to do what I need to do because the pains, the issues I've got going on with my ankles and feet, the pains that I have going on with my neck and everything, I haven't been doing anything to take care of it. And it's been getting worse. And here, here we go. It's just fireballs, says Jake Samoy. 
You mean like from a comet or from a, not from comet, from something flying along the air? That's the point when you're seeing there's evidence of stuff out there and people say, oh, it's just a fireball. <clears throat> what kind of fireball are you aware, Peter, that would have that kind of dynamics? <laughs> That's a fireball from a meteorite coming in. That doesn't match a meteorite perspective, does it? Yeah, they're they're going pretty slowly. You know, even even if they're really far away, and they were they would be huge if they were really far away um, at that size. You know, they they'd have to be really big. Uh, so they they don't look like they're all that far away. They look like they're a little bit closer. But you know, there is ball lightning and things like that. But uh, and that and that's something that's kind of strange in itself because that's been a debate for decades in science whether ball lightning exists and some people say it does some people say it doesn't because no one managed to get it on camera right. no one managed to photograph the stuff until very recently so but here we can actually like see this, up into the sky the clouds aren't that thick it's out there this is near twilight and actually this looks like the same time of day that i see the things flying over here it's it's just as it's going dark outside the sky is starting to darken up a little bit and then we'll see these things cutting across the sky yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, even things right, even things like this, you know, uh, with ball lightning, there's still a huge debate to even convince anyone that that existed, and that's extremely hard to photograph. Um, and uh, now there's kind of some agreement that it exists because someone managed to get a, a spectral video of one for a few seconds. Um, so, you know, that's and I think someone managed to make one in the lab too. So now. You know, the ball lightning shouldn't exist because you shouldn't have any way of holding all of those charged ions together. They should just fly apart and dissipate. But for some reason that's completely unknown, all those separate charges manage to hold together um, and at fairly low temperatures, apparently, uh, which uh, there's no real explanation how they do that. So even if it's something like you know, something unknown, a phen weather phenomenon that's unknown, we still wouldn't know how it functions. So saying it's just anything is probably not where we should be looking. We should be asking, you know, what what is this? Because we really don't know. It could be there are earthquake lights and things like that that come out, uh, but those are really rare and it's kind of, those are really hard to get on camera too. These things look to me like they're probably craft because they're moving at a, stable speed and they're both kind of moving together and there's just two of them they don't seem to be kind of fluctuating in and out so i don't know what they are it's one of those situations where the video is not uh, really sharp enough to definitively see it but if it is sharp enough to definitively see it then people will say that it's cg or you know artificial yeah. intelligence driven so and they, it, and they can go ahead and strange... say that i'm just saying it matches exactly what I've seen in front of my house. That's the only reason I brought it up. It's up there in the sky. That they're slowly kind of moving. There's no noise going on. It's something that's there. It's the right color profile. It's the right movement profile. So you tend to go towards things that you've seen and stuff that you know is real and be able to say, okay, yeah, I, I can relate to this because it's, it's similar to what I've seen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, that's exactly right. Is the best we can do really at this point is make patterns of things until we figure out what each individual thing is. And, you know, it it doesn't look like that airplane. You know, it, it's not flying as fast nearly. It doesn't have any uh, blinking FAA lights on it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, I'm not sure what it is, but it's definitely, you know, it's something interesting. And there are a lot of... Uh, similar type of orbs have been reported that will fly around fairly slowly or in strange ways yep. or make strange turns or take off at speed. Pause for one second. Mike, just continue accelerate. this conversation with Peter. I'll be right back. Library calls. Yeah, go ahead. Continue, go ahead, Peter. Peter. Sure, Thomas. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, some of these things have been seen to just accelerate at fantastic speeds. And those are clearly not uh, some kind of consumer drones or uh or just ordinary plasma balls um because we'd have to have something that explains the acceleration so you know th these things are uh great when they're caught on camera 
And even if we can't really tell what they are exactly, you know, it could be some kind of man-made aircraft, the light on it, it's flying slowly, but, you know, we don't know that. Uh, but it does look a lot like a lot of these things that are reported that have some fantastic accelerations with them. And it's interesting there are two of them because usually people don't fly two drones at once. So that's, uh, that would be kind of unusual there. Yeah, good points, Peter. Uh, Neil, your hand is up. You're next. Uh, yeah, um, I was just going to say um, the uh, anybody who ghost hunts, uh, uh, you see a ramp up in activity right at twilight. Uh, so it's interesting that you also see that same ramping up uh, with UFO activity, which just lends uh, uh, evidence that that we're observing that the two are connected, and uh, it's just uh, really, um, that it seems to really come alive uh, at that twilight. Uh, it'd be interesting. It's interesting that Rod Serling put that to be the title of this weird show. You know, uh, it's just some thoughts. So, yeah, I agree. Back to the conversation at hand. Disclosures kind of slow down to a pace. I don't like it. Mike doesn't like it. I know our audience doesn't like it, but I have to be realistic. Disclosure is slowed down in addition to disclosure being slowed down. I've put the show and everything else in front of my health and the things I've got going on in my life. So on that note, we've got to slow things down a bit. Hopefully, it'll kick back up again, and we can have things to go ahead and talk about. So on that particular respect, the regular schedule where we have is kind of in flux right, <coughs> right now. As I've learned, well, <laughs> I think I'm still 55. I could be 56. I don't remember. We'll leave it at that. At the age that I'm at, get... I will be 56. Thank you for correcting that. Getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning to go to work, to go through all the different stuff that I've got going on. And then having a show on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or just Monday and Wednesday or whatever it is, is difficult for this old man. Especially when the amount of time I have to look for stuff has been shot. Now, if there are things going on, we'll be here. We'll cover it. If things are quiet, we're going to take a little bit of a break. Now, the good thing is, when I go ahead and, at least when I used to go ahead and exercise, <laughs> it's been a while, doing cardio, my mind kicks in. My creative juices start flowing. And it's about going ahead and uh, coming up with the ideas, figuring out, and taking that additional time I'm going to have, besides just working on good old me here, figuring out where to take this because let, I'll, well, let's be honest, the number of people who are watching UFO shows these days has had a decent decline on YouTube, whether we like it or not. It's just where it is. I wish it was different, but it's, it's, it's not. It's where it is. So you know what? <laughs> <laughs> getting some additional exercise, clearing my mind, taking a step back for a little bit. I'm not walking away. We're just slowing things down for a bit because they need to be slowed down. I'll probably go ahead and have a little repeat of this on Monday. I'm sure I could see Lou Buffet jumping up and down saying, yeah, he's going away. No, I'm not going away. The thing is, to be honest, I don't want to turn into a Lou Buffet. Granted, I've got about 150 to 200 pounds more before I would be in that category. I'm heading in that direction, and I don't want to go there, just being honest. <laughs> but we've been doing this pretty much nonstop without a real break for almost three years now. And that would take a hit at anybody. Uh, you got a couple people in the back with your hands up. Let's go ahead and deal with this. Neil, go ahead.
I guess not. Christian, you got it. Yeah, man, I'm kind of, I'm kind of with you. Uh, I think you should take care of yourself. And like, I know that when uh, things start happening, you're gonna cover them. I got no doubt about that. And I've been kind of, uh, in a, in a, I'm, it's not that I'm giving up or anything like that. I just, you know, how much energy you put into something, if something's not giving back, right? Like, I'm, I'm not gonna, you know, the, just. I think it's good to take breaks, and you know, when the, and I think the thing is, man, you can't control the phenomena. And the U.S. government can't control the phenomena, and it seems to be acting. You know, it's not stopping. It's not getting the memo. In fact, it's getting it's getting more intense. I mean, you're showing your UFO videos, and I'm thinking I got a bunch of those too. You know, like, and a lot of people are seeing these things. They're everywhere now. Like, I thought the first time I saw a UFO that that was going to be a once in a lifetime experience. You know, in 2016, and it wasn't until. 2022 that i started you know after looking up for a long time not seeing anything after 2022 i don't know what happened it's easy to see them now it's uh and i don't and i don't do c5 i don't do i just look up you know what i mean i don't do any of that uh meditative stuff or whatever i literally just look up and and another thing that you said yeah people you know but i think people know and the younger generations will definitely know you know that this is i think you know that's what's gonna it's gonna be a slow paradigm shift i have seen a bunch of interviews though lately of uh people after chris bledsoe went on uh what a top show danny jones the concrete podcast a bunch of skeptical people i think i've seen like four or five uh channels with a bunch of followers being like yeah right i can call this guy and he can summon ufos and they've all done it and they're all discussing like what the hell happened like you know, they're all of them, you know, and I think I've seen that like five times already. So it's it's like I said, I think it's going to be a slow process coming from the people, the government. I I don't know, man. But yeah, I understand, Thomas. Yeah, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Ali, go ahead. That was my mic. Sorry. You know, I, I, I cannot... Um... Uh, tell you enough to confirm you and Mike um, Thomas the way that you have managed to produce these shows day after day, night after night, with fantastic, interesting, interesting content. Uh, getting all these um, competent um, uh, people on, uh, fantastic uh, conversations, and. Uh, I think your ambition, uh, you're, you're so, you were so involved, you are so living with this disclosure, this UFO question and topic, uh, that it's matched your ambition with the show. And for me, I think if we compare to, you know, weaponized or uh, the other uh, uh, UFO uh, shows, they're like, you know, every, well, two times a month or something like that. You would be perfectly uh, excused because I wondered too how you uh, um, <laughs> make you to find the energy to do this night after night after night. And I understand what kind of effort that you have to put in to get this uh, show uh, every night uh, with and with Mike as well. I just want to tell you, I, I admire your voice, and and I think you definitely can go with the flow here, uh, Thomas, oh, yeah. and you don't have to excuse yourself. Just now, it's time to maybe slow down a bit, maybe once a week, maybe two a week, if you find a, an issue or a, or a topic to to handle. Well, then you just add, you just uh, we get through YouTube. We know if you're up to making a new show. So don't kill yourself, Thomas. That's, well, that's the uh, important thing, but it, it's making sure yeah. I'm paced for the long term. And that's part of the situation where I haven't been making sure I'm paced because when you get up and you're having so much pain, you're having a hard time walking, you have to push through it. You just can't give into it. And I hate to say it, at 55, it's getting worse as every day goes on. So it's about literally pulling back, putting some of that back time back into my time. So when I get home from work, I don't have to worry about going ahead and getting ready for the show. I can go ahead and focus on myself and getting my physical 
itself back to where it definitely needs to be. I saw a picture of myself, Luke took the other day, uh, Luke had taken the other day with the three dogs, and I looked at myself, and I was like, oh, my God. Is that me? <laughs> do I really look that way? Holy shit, I need to do something about this, and it's everything else that gets into it. Forget about the looks. I feel it myself. Trust me. You do different things. Granted, thank God my neck has calmed down. That has been scary as shit going on for the last month. That's not there, but everything else that's there. So, yeah, we're going to slow down a bit, and we're going to try and turn it into a way that's going to be beneficial for myself, for Mike, and everything everything into it. Because I've even heard Mike talking about some of our conversations about all the bullshit going in in our lives and with the show and the stress that it puts us all through. Right, Mike? Oh, absolutely, Thomas. Yeah. I mean, we have full lives between our families, responsibilities. There's not enough hours in the day. You and I have had plenty of conversations about that. And in the show which takes a lot of work, a lot of time. And um, all of this is mostly behind the scenes. What people see when we go live on the show, that's what is the image of the show. They don't realize all of the work and time and hours that go into behind the show to be able to create the show. Yeah, Finding content, working out schedules with guests of interviews, going over that. Sometimes we pre-record an interview before the show is live at really early hours, like we did recently with Francisco Guerrero. Yeah. There's a lot of work that a lot of people don't see. And I think those are the points that Thomas and I are trying to make the audience aware of, because when that goes on for as long as it has, and right now there's really nothing that's going on in this subject that requires our full attention day in and day out, um, Thomas and I have decided to change the schedule and slow things down a bit according to what's going on out there in the real world it'll be beneficial for the show because the show will be better at that point there'll be the right amount of attention on it and when the audience does join us when we go on there'll be something for them to see as it is right now we're juggling too much too hard with very little results no so, this is this isn't a goodbye no reality not check at all. Harold. No. no, what this is, is, and this isn't me saying I'm I'm done with this and I'm going to turn into a debunker and I'm going to start attacking Lou and David and everybody else. Like That's it. not what it's about. Not in the slightest. It's about saying, hey, slow things down a little bit. I need to spend some time on me to get me to where me needs to be so we're clear to go forward on this. Peter, you've had your hand up for a while. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I agree. We're, we're in kind of a kind of a lull right now as far as uh, disclosure and UFO news. But we're also kind of in a peak, right? Because we just had this big kind of 30-year peak. The last UFO hearings were 30 years ago. So we've got this really big peak that we're uh, just kind of coming off of a little bit. So we're still, you know, further ahead in the public consciousness of that there is something out there. People are seeing things, have seen things. Uh, and there's more moving forward from the scientific side than there really ever has been uh, on this. There's more independent science now moving, even, uh, you know, with SCU, also with NASA. And we've got Avi Loeb looking for his tiny metal balls. So we've got a lot of things going on out there. Uh, but at the same time, you know, these these UFO reports pick up more towards summer usually, right? They usually peak around uh, early July um, area. So, you know, right now people are just kind of returning to be going outside as it's warming up. There are going to be people looking at the sky more, looking at the summer sky, and they'll have their phones and their cameras with them, and we'll undoubtedly be getting some good stuff coming in the future. So, yeah. you know, I wouldn't say that this is a major ebb. I would say that that uh, historic report from Arrow, uh, this is a situation where the media landscape did not work uh, in our favor now because people are just hitting the headlines. So they're not getting physical newspapers where they actually sit down and read the entire article. Uh, so in some ways, 
the digital social media internet space is working in favor of keeping the information in front of people. And in some ways, they're just kind of, they heard that there's a UFO investigation and they assumed that this was the resolution with this arrow report and they don't have a physical newspaper that they bought that they're sitting down and actually reading the details to find out that no, this was just a kind of a rehash of a blue book historical cases and they didn't even include the modern cases and the most interesting historical cases. So I'd say we're, we're somewhat in the lull, but I think we've got a good chance of picking this up here. And also, uh, you know, Thomas, you need to take care of your health. You need to make sure that you're focused. You've got good energy. I know there are some energy boosters. Some of the kids use them. There's one called, um, what is it? Uh, cocaine. Have you tried that? <laughs> I used to be on Adderall, but I stopped using Adderall because of the damage it can do to the heart, and my high, pulse was too high, and so was my blood pressure. So it's just all right. Well, that might not be that might not be a good one. Maybe it's just some rest. Maybe just rest and relaxation. Then I'm not sure about all these pharmaceuticals out there to the, these days, but yeah, rest and rest and uh, recuperation might be a good way. And uh, you I know, know, if that I, means I, trust me, I've had more than enough rest. What this what this lazy bastard needs is some good old fucking exercise. But talking about Avi Lube, thank you for reminding me. There actually is a story that I grabbed earlier on Flipboard earlier today, and I was like, oh, God, this is something we actually have that we could actually talk about. Let me go ahead and bring it up. Now, Avi, we know he's talked about Avi Lube's little metal balls. We'll get to you in one second, Andy. This is a good one. This is a good one. Exclusive alien sightings may be a demonic presence shifting from dimension to dimension with a small cluster of government members allegedly believing UFOs could be Satan-like. Yes, visitors from other dimensions may be demonic. As alien expert Avi Loeb warns UFO sightings should not be engaged with. Professor Avi Loeb claims sightings in the skies may be otherworldly life hopping from galaxy to galaxy using their futuristic tech to make the leap into our world. The expert confirmed demons would bring a religious awe to earth. A slim collection of UK, UK, because it's a UK show, and U.S. government members like Nick Pope also believe that UFOs are a, of a sinister variety and may be attempting to tackle Satan himself, whose minions are using quote or quote using quantum gravity to zoom through time. Are you kidding? Did Abby Loeb write that for real? This is coming from the Daily Star, but apparently Professor Loeb's claims or Loeb's claims were aired in the Paranormal UFO Connection where he claimed, quote, it's possible that they would be able to figure out if there are extra spatial dimensions and take advantage of them using quantum gravity engineers. Now, granted, this is the same man who say Muamua flew, back, flew past our planet, dropping off probes that parachuted into our atmosphere. So doing so means these demonic aliens can bounce around worlds, leading to alleged internal confusion for the government, Professor Loeb added, uh, saying, quote, So, as crazy as it might sound to some, for example, there is a faction within, particularly the U.S. government, but I've seen it in the U.K. as well, who believe UFOs are demonic. Andy. You've lost it there, my friend. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's the funniest thing I've heard all year. Um, oh, I composed myself for two seconds. And I do have a picture of Avi Loeb from the, I mean, granted, I am not making this shit up. I could not make it up, my friends. Let me go ahead and bring it into the document. There, There's there's the picture of Avi Loeb from the article. Yes, he's in it, and it's coming from Yes. The Daily Star. We know they're a very reputable paper, but they did talk to Avi Loeb and reported on what Avi was saying. So, you know. Well, can I, can I say from a man who deals in space turds and tiny metal or tiny little balls? Tiny metal balls, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and 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 no offense, all my American friends, every out there. Um, yeah. Uh, most British people don't deal in demons and angels, you know. Um, and I'm, uh, yeah, that is, yeah, that, that, 
going a little bit downhill in my mood where you're talking about you know, taking a step back, which you know people need to understand. Thomas gives so much of his time for this subject. You know, but you, seriously, you a story like this, we have to say, oh my God, but this you, is you, a you we have breaking there, mate. breaking UFO news alert. <laughs> oh, I'm going to need to lose uh, use the library in a minute because yeah, there might be a, a, a slight damp patch in me on my sofa because um, yeah, it was barely oh, able to contain myself there. Um, yeah, what a load of tripe. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's Andy. That's called <laughs> anal leakage. And the older you get, the more of a reality it comes leakage, for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> and we're talking about Al and not Al Bundy, but the other Al. Yeah. Um, <sighs> and it's know, a friend if, I'm if, very familiar with. If, 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 yeah. <laughs> if it comes with our age, mate, you're, you're a couple of years older than me. But, um, you know, if Nick Pope is like most of us English people, yeah, we... You know, we don't subscribe to the angels and demons. Um, I'm, I'm, I might be speaking out of turn. You know, he, he has, uh, and I'm, out of I'm turn? trying not to. Or out of turn. Yeah, out of turn. You know, I am really, really trying not to offend any of my American friends because I love everybody over there. All you guys. Oh, please let her rip, uh, my friend. This yeah, is I, a I, I believe oh, go, go ahead, Andy. Lay it on us. I saw it. I'm getting shouted at by my other half. <laughs> but, um, this is, come on, tomorrow's the day that actually the alien Jesus is going to rise and go van go missing from his oh, I've, I've, cube. I've, I've, been, I've been told I look rather like him, but I'm not that way inclined. But, um, yeah, so. You look nothing like the Easter Bunny, Andy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the Easter Bunny. Might be the Easter Hooray, Bunny. Tonight, but, yeah, I'm the Easter Bunny. Today. Yeah, so yeah, um, what load of crap. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad. I you know at least someone reminded me about this wonderful story about demonic. E uh, there we go from Flipboard, <laughs> of course. <sighs> one, yes. uh, one of those days, I tell you. Yeah, deep, deep breath and yeah. Rachel, how you doing, my dear lady? I'm good. I just had two quick things, I guess. Uh, at first, it's interesting you brought up that Avi Loeb demon article. Uh, I'm with Andy, get quite the chuckle out of it. But here's my thing is that I have been waiting for that particular backlash to kick up. And I'm surprised it took this long, to be honest. And then my other thing I wanted to say to you, Thomas, is as far as, you know, doing less shows and doing less work and taking care of yourself, how about if we don't look at it as slowing down, we look at it as everybody else needs some time to catch up. Because the sightings are obviously increasing, the videos are increasing, we just need to wait for all those ding links to reach the point that we are. That's a good way to put it. It, it, but it's also understanding the signals that I've been getting following those. And yes, carnivore diet saves, save my life. And Zarab, uh, I hate to say it. If you're eating a lot of eggs, more importantly, you're following the liver king. You're eating a lot of liver. Do me a favor. Zen Zarab research T M A O T M A O Glenn, uh, Glenn, have you ever heard of T M A O before? Yeah, isn't it a um, <laughs> isn't it turning mother? Oh, I can't remember. Uh, I think my daughter says it to me. Yeah, uh, but no, I've probably got the wrong context. But Thomas, so um, TMAO. I've, let me get it to you really quick on this one. Sure. We'll get there in one second. TMAO. When you eat foods that are high in certain proteins, above and beyond, liver is the worst. Then take it into eggs and other foods. Even freaking some fish have TMAO. But you just have to look at the amount of TMAO. What is it? When you eat certain foods, that foods goes down into your stomach and you're, it gets digested. But as part of your microbiome, that's within your stomach. Zenzarab, you don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, so you're wrong on this one, my friend. Just listen in on this one. Research it. TMAO. 
when you go ahead and eat food like eggs and liver and other stuff, it puts off especially red meat like steak and other stuff. When you go and you eat this stuff, the biome within your stomach kicks off something called TMAO. And that chemical compound, which is, let's get back away from this, is technically known as trimethylamine and oxide. Trimethylene and oxide. Let me bring this up really quick. Not Dr. Tom, not even close, but I'm just trying to share this with you. Trimethylene and oxide, TMAO, is released into your bloodstream. Now, a TMAO molecule, whatever you want to call it, that is in your bloodstream is okay, but it acts as a magnet. It acts as a magnet. It collects free cholesterol, like you get from eggs or red meat, and it also attracts carnitine, like acetyl L-carnitine that you get from eating red meat and eggs and everything. When you have a TMAO particle that collects and it gets a piece of cholesterol and it also gets a piece of carnitine, it turns into a crystal, it becomes sticky, It attaches to your venous bodies, meaning your veins and arteries within your body. And it turns into arterial sclerosis. Flat out. So carnivore diet, wonderful. You're going to lose weight. But you know how, uh, uh, why they call it a carnivore diet, why they don't call it the Atkins diet anymore? Because Atkins died of arterial sclerosis. He had a heart attack and died because his arteries were completely clogged, period. So what you are is what you eat. But more importantly, when you eat some of this stuff, just being serious, you got to do the due diligence and just don't go along with people say, well, the carnivore diet, I can lose all this weight. That's great. But if you lose the weight and you clog up your arteries... Are you going to deal with peripheral artery disease? Are you going to deal with a heart attack? Are you going to deal with other parts? Are you going to deal with my dad? Like he had the uh, uh, carotid arteries going up to the back of his brain. One was completely clogged and the other one was. You know, there are ways to get around it. However, just got to be careful about what you're putting into your body. Don't follow the fads. Follow the science. No, I'm 100% behind you, um, Thomas. And um, I probably primarily eat chicken and that's very a rarity like i eat a lot of thai curries and mainly um rice and vegetables and a lot of fruit um i've lost 30 kg since november as you guys probably are aware i got sick in november with COVID, and then pneumonia attacked me and i was in icu for a week but anyway coming back to thomas I, thomas why can't you take a week off why can't you take a couple of weeks off i'm sure the audience would understand that you yeah. look after you for a couple of weeks. Well, in a couple, do do I really think that the state of disclosure is going to change in a couple of weeks? I'm just trying to be realistic. And anytime you need to get into a new phase of life, you have to set up for it and get in, into the particular. But everyone needs a holiday, Thomas. Yeah. Well, that, that's why do. I'm slowing down. And if we slow down down the conversation to go along of where the actual topic is actually going, it's going to give us a greater effect to convey the news of what's going on. Granted, I could go out there and I could start producing daily videos and take other people's pieces and just comment on videos. We've done that in the past. I want to have more. I want to have something bigger to this. But the reality is you can't make something out of nothing. Ali, you've had your hand up for a while. Yeah, I just, uh, while we were talking, I I was checking with the, uh, with the other UFO uh, podcasts and shows on on YouTube. uh, And I'm so sure now that you and Mike, you really spoiled us as an audience. 
because uh, when I remember this, the shows that you that have been uh, watching here with you, Thomas, it's packed with news, and it's also on a very high level, high quality people. So if you compare to other UFO uh, shows, they take like one video and then they have, uh, you know, half an hour, maybe an hour to talk just about that video. And, and but we are so far with you, we have like, well, we can have uh, two really competent uh, uh, guests. Uh, we can have uh, what, uh, Rich Doty on and uh, Rich Doty when he's here. He's, he's just um, letting us know four or five really interesting U U UFO disclosure news. And we, now we got, we're got we getting used and spoiled to get all this information uh, with, with, uh, uh, with your show here, Thomas. Yeah. So I really think you can go, you can slow down your ambitions because you're far ahead of everyone else when it comes to facts and, and news that's for sure yeah. so and yeah. I'm, I'm just calling out where i'm at looking in the yeah. mirrors seeing where i'm at physically understanding where i'm at with my nervous system and everything else and knowing i need to make a change and if i need to make a change it's going to be a drastic one it's not going to be anything the people who don't watch the show don't know it's going to be like what the hell happened again it's not like we're pulling the plug in and turning disclosure tonight getting rid of it and coming back with uh something that trashes this no i'm i support everything where we're at but it's more of just literally just pulling it back a couple notches to, to get my new grounding and then to go from there exactly like lou elizondo did it's the same strategy and we're doing the same thing, taking a page from his book. So, but not to the same degree that he did because he has gone um, completely, completely underground. Dark. Completely yeah. dark. That's yeah. not what Thomas and I are saying. We're not shutting it down and temporarily putting it off on hold. It's not going on hiatus. We're just going to adjust the regular weekly schedule down to something that is more manageable temporarily. Yeah. 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 I just want to, yeah, you know, as an, uh, as an inventor myself, it's very hard to discipline uh, yourself uh, if you're develop, developing something and decide uh, the, the, the limit where it's good enough from nice to have. Nice to have, then you can go, you know, how far, is the, uh, <laughs> whether you can go very, very far because you have to decide what's good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Thor just and that's asked very hard to do audience. sometimes. Yeah, Thor just asked in the audience really quick, are we going to go on earlier? No fucking way. <laughs> Six <laughs> o'clock is early enough. I actually like seven o'clock, but the problem was when I was doing seven o'clock, seven o'clock at night, I'd be done at nine. Nine is the point I already need to be going to bed to get up at five o'clock in the morning because it takes time. You turn yourself down, take a shower, get ready, go to bed, try and fall asleep. It's 10, 10 o'clock plus. You need to get up at freaking five o'clock in the morning. It's there hitting you on the doorstep. Yeah. Well, whatever you decide, whatever you decide, Thomas. As, as an audience here, I just want to thank you for all the thank fantastic you, shows that you are you are yeah. bringing to us. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, and Mike as well. Fantastic. Thank you. Show. Appreciate that, Ali. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Greatly I was on heavy doses of prednisone for three plus years, and that destroyed my body. I'm finally off it now. I was on. Um, what do you call it? I was also on. Oh, it's the other one I was on. I was on uh, methotrexate for a year and a half, and that's a cancer med. And that did a toll to my body. Uh, there's a bunch of different things I just need to get past. I need to start seeing some doctors. I've had horrible tinnitus kicking in ever since I was on the methotrexate. I've had other issues going on, and it's just a matter of kicking back a little bit so I can get to know my metal practitioners a lot. I know there's my cardiologists have been wanting to pull me in for years to go ahead and get additional tests. And based on some things that I'm seeing, I may not like the answer, but it's a good idea to get there. Now, granted, granted, if I am dealing with any kind of arterial sclerosis, there's a, a little secret out there of something called cyclobetadextrin. 
and that is something that literally causes arterial sclerosis regression. Although it has some side effects, it can go deaf from it if you put it in too strong, but it literally melts the arterial sclerosis out of your veins. So not that I have that, but in case it is there, I know there's ways to get around it. Christian Morales, you've had your your hand up for a while very patiently. It's great to have you back again, my friend. Yeah, man. I already, I already said my piece and how I feel about that. I just, I've just been processing this whole thing about Abby Loeb, and uh, you know, if you guys, anybody who's familiar with the, uh, with the literature, knows about the, the Collins elite, and all this, and and I, I just wonder because even it, it's funny, but like uh, for a guy f- from Harvard to be talking about demons, you know, like well, what happened? You know what I mean? Like I, I think it's, it's, I think it's funny, but. I, I'm I'm actually pretty interested. Like, what the hell happened to this guy for him to be saying something like that? You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, it's been a great show, man. Thanks for. Uh, I'm glad to be back here. I barely have any time to do anything like this anymore. But uh, it was good to be back. It's great to have you back, my friend. Absolutely, Peter Pandy. You've had your hand up for a bit. Yeah, just going after what uh, Christian said there. You know, I. You know, keep in mind that Avi, you know, he writes a lot of books, he writes a lot of books on UFOs. He wrote one on, uh, you know, the Amuamua. He wrote one on his um, adventures on the boat looking for his tiny metal balls. He wrote one on, um, I think he was tying his shoes while he was thinking about UFOs. Um, and so he writes a lot of these books. And I think he's up to like five or six now. So he was on a, apparently a paranormal podcast so he may have been playing to his audience and his books may not have been selling the way that uh, he was hoping or maybe his publisher had a lot of boxes that they didn't know what to do with and they're taking up a lot of space and garage sales are a pain so he kind of might have said hey Avi go talk about the go full into this whole demon thing and sell books to this audience and probably nobody's going to hear about this in the rest of the wider community so just go hog wild demons whatever popping out of portals popping out your toilet bowl in the morning when you walk into the shower or whatever you know just go for it so he might have just gone full in on it true you're right you pointed out the obvious avi like many others in disclosure whether it's him or Richard Dolan coming out with his new book, they're all completely in the business selfless of completely selling books. Selfless. Absolutely selfless. I used, selfless. To, say, Absolutely I used selfless. to say, Peter, I used to say, I'll probably get in trouble for this one. Those who can do, those who can't teach, and those who can't do or teach, write books. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be fine if he had some material to write books on, but he's kind of been drawing out these UFO books a little bit, and he's kind of running out of material. So he may be into the demon realm at this point, and it might just be, uh, you know, he may just need it. Yeah. He may be, he may be, he may be. So what a great show. No, Mike, we're going to do a quick hour show today, like you said. Oh, that never yeah. happens, does it? No, it never does. I, I told you, I knew. But that's okay, because now people are going to have to adjust to a different schedule on the show. And we wanted to take the time and the opportunity for people to be aware of this so that they weren't caught off guard or surprised unexpectedly. Yeah. So it was time well spent. And I also want to make another point. One of the reasons that Thomas and I work as hard as we do to make this show, it's because we really care about the audience. And that's what it's about. That's why we do this. Obviously, everybody knows we don't get paid. This is the time that we volunteer to put in to produce this and make this show and to bring these people on to content so that our audience is educated, entertained, and aware. Um, Because as you know, the show motto also is, for the longest time, Ben, we're serious about not being serious. So we bring that to the audience as well to help lighten up your day. And this is why we've been committed and, and worked as hard as we have, because we, we do it for our audience. And that's not going to stop. That's not going to change. We're not going away. We're not closing up shop, and you're never going to see or hear from us again. We're just going to change up our schedule and deal with it accordingly. So you'll see us not as frequently every week, but you'll still see us every week. 
And that was the other message. The other part of the message we wanted everybody to know and understand. So, and if during the time that the show is not on during the week, um, anybody wants to reach out to Thomas or myself, I'm sure they're well aware. Um, Thomas Fessler channel at gmail.com. That's Thomas's email. Mine or no, even Mike. better yet, Thomas at disclosure tonight.com. All right, Thomas at disclosure tonight.com or Mike at disclosure tonight.com. Same thing. Or anybody could follow me on Twitter, social media at Mike Disclosure. Same thing with Thomas. Thomas yeah, at Thomas, Thomas L. L. Fessler, Fessler on Twitter. Yep. Yeah. So you could always reach out to us if, when we're not on, and we'll still be there. We'll be around. We're not gone, but we're just slowing we're just down adjusting. a little bit because this old man needs to go ahead and take care of his body. And as I was talking to Mike about this, you had said above and beyond your health is the most important, Thomas. Fuck the show. Yeah, I did say that, but it, it, it was it was private, Thomas. I didn't want to express that sentiment publicly, but that's okay. Yeah, no, I I firmly believe that. If you don't take care of your health and something happens to you, then there's no show anyway. So what's the point? Yeah. So, yeah. This isn't no, a denied I, or farewell. This is just saying, yeah, we'll be back. Not as often as we'd like to be, but hopefully, hopefully. Oh, we'll be around. You know, hopefully the wheels of disclosure, Lou, will, will change. David, others will start moving forward. And but we'll until move then, it. it's like we're spinning our our wheels in the mud. Granted, we're getting some papers coming out from so, the Saul Foundation. Soul, There's Soul not Foundation, a lot of yeah. motion coming out of those papers, just saying. Right. See, Thomas and I are, w are very well aware of what's going on with this closure behind the scenes. So we know when we need to pay attention and do a show for the audience, there's content, but we also know at the same time when there isn't. And a lot of other shows don't do that. They will regurgitate nonsense just to keep going. We feel that would be a disservice to our audience because they expect a higher quality from us and better content. So we're not going to cheapen ourselves just to keep the show going. We're going to adjust so that it's on when it needs to be and we cover what we have to. So, again, like Thomas said, we're not going away. We're not going anywhere. You're just going to, we'll be around, but you're going to see us not as often. Yeah. It, it's just a small adjustment, but we're still committed. We're still here for our audience. We're still going to be around, and you're going to see us on a regular basis, just not as often as you're used to. Yeah. And that's temporary. That's temporarily. <laughs> it's not a permanent thing. This is well, just for hopefully, now. Hopefully... If I can, can get their acting gear, Peter. Yeah, if I can just kind of add to that, what you said, Mike, uh, you could also think of this, you know, nobody does six shows a week out there on this UFO topic. So you could just kind of think of this as returning to a more sane schedule, you know, exactly. more like is in oh, the more standard, uh, you know, what the normal is out there and not doing twice as many shows as everyone else. Right. Because like Thomas mentioned earlier, weaponized with Nap and Corbell, they have a show once or twice a month. And same thing is true for Russ Coltard and Bryce Zabel. Their need to know is on once a month sometimes, especially lately, because there's really no content. So we're not going to slow it down to that degree. But at the same time, we're going to tear a page from their book and we're going to slow it down just enough so that there's a balance, which is what it's all about. Oh yeah. Look, we're, we're well aware that members of our audience have also unexpectedly had some health scares. And it's kind of like, kind of like a wake-up call, because if you just keep plodding along day in and day out, and you don't take time to take care of yourself, sometimes you end up feet first through the hospital. And nobody wants that. So we're trying to make sure that that doesn't happen for no reason. And if we're not required to be doing that grind day in and day out, then we're going to adjust it accordingly so that we can also focus on ourselves, our families, and also the show, but not as frequently, only when need be, but not as frequently. Yeah, some and people were saying there's no picture on YouTube. I can verify, yes, there was a picture on YouTube. Not sure what's going on. 
on that note, great conversation tonight. Ha- what a happy Saturday. Hopefully everyone's had a good time hanging out, talking about where we're at, where we're not at with disclosure. Not a lot going on, but you know what? Hopefully things will turn around. In the meantime, we're going to slow down a little bit so I can get my ass on the health train where it needs to go. On that note, I want to go ahead and thank everybody for coming out to this episode of Disclosure tonight. What a great opportunity to hang out with friends. Uh, Let's go ahead and see who the heck we have out there. Let's uh, go ahead and thank, first of all, people didn't recognize the song when I was playing it last night when we were getting some super chats and everything coming out. I want to go ahead and thank the people giving us super chats tonight. That includes Robert. Thank you very much. Scott Jensen. Faze Will. Zenza Rob and Laura Greeno. Thank you very much. I appreciate everyone's love and support of everything here at Disclosure tonight, my friends. Thank you for everything that you've done for giving to us. Every, Like I've said, all the money that comes to Disclosure tonight goes back into our production. I am so humbled and thankful for everyone's ongoing love and support of everything we do here at Disclosure tonight. More importantly, like I do in every night, I want to thank everybody who has been in the chat because the chat has truly been where it's at. Who do we still have out there in the chat right now? Let me bring up a participant list and thank, personally, I want to thank Abby Araxa, Brian Pemble, Chameleon UK, Charles Kerr, Christine Lynn, Colette Dyson, Eli McGinnis, Eric Roth and the Gurus, Jan, Kathy, Kelly Bro with those piercing blue eyes, Laura Greeno, Liliana Chuna, Lord Malthus, um, Metal Gaming Moondust, Neil Carr, Paul Demon, Peggy with Crockett and Tubbs, and Steve, Pete Liebel, Reality Check Resonate, Robert Anthony, Shermanator Osborne, Sun Saver from NHH, Thor Panku, TK, and Yell Tommy Tanker, also known as Andy. More importantly, I want to thank the 345 people that we've had the opportunity to block from the chat on disclosure tonight, Mike. <laughs> it's actually that many. Because it, you know why? Because they deserve it, don't they? Oh, absolutely. Troll patrol. Yeah. Yes. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. You better believe it. More importantly, actually, not that one. I want to do this one. There we go. More importantly, I want to thank our friends in the back who have been hanging out for this episode of Disclosure tonight. That includes Andy W. Thanks for coming out tonight, Andy. Uh, wouldn't miss it for the world, Thomas. And I'm here with you all the way, mate. Whatever happens in the future, yep, I'll be knocking about. And uh, it's been a great to, thing to be part of the Troll yeah. Patrol as well. And honestly, so honestly back, getting rid bro. of the Saturday show is not on. Is not going to happen. Saturday show. You better not, mate. You better not. <laughs> I'll come, I will come and find you. Eh? Just not for fast, well, I will, I will hold you, you to that. Just for you, my friend. Also want to thank Brian Pemble. Thanks for coming in so late, Brian, but thank you for being here. Hey, better late than never. Uh, I think it's a good thing you're doing. Once we're all in a better spot mentally and physically, we'll be ready for what comes next. So, You better believe it, my friend. Also want to thank Glenn Forbes all the way from New Zealand. Thanks for coming back today, Glenn. Thanks, Thomas, and I hope you enjoy your um, vacation. If not, uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, it'll be there one way or the other. Also want to thank Mike Sokoloff. Thanks for coming in today, Mike. You're welcome, Thomas. I also want to go ahead and thank uh, Neil Carr from the great state of Oregon. Great state of Oregon. Thanks for coming in today, Neil. Yeah, of course. And uh, growth indicates change. So, you know, um, it all it all works. We're all on this journey together. You better believe it, my friend. Also want to thank Nick. Thanks for being here today, Nick. You're welcome, Tess. <laughs> thank you for coming today, Nick. I also want to thank all the way from the great country of Sweden, Ali Alvian. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you, Thomas. And thank you, everybody here in the on the back shop. You're fantastic, guys. Love oh, you yeah. all. You better believe it, my friends. Also in the back, we've got Peter Panda. Thanks for coming in today, Peter. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and definitely take care of yourself, Thomas. We don't need a forklift taking you to and from the alien news desk there. So you <laughs> know, rest and relax, take care of yourself and, uh, you know, tip top shape and, uh, a fewer, fewer shows, high quality shows, um, that's on kind of a sane schedule. Sounds like a good plan. You better believe it. Also want to thank phase will William. Thanks for being out here tonight, my friend. Hey, Thomas. Uh, thank you. And health is wealth, buddy. Hit the gym. Yes. 
Absolutely. Also, then going to Rachel Smith. Thanks for being here today, Rachel. Thomas, my man, you scared the bejesus out of me. I thought you were going to announce the show was ending. Oh, fuck that. Taking a break. Yeah, I yeah. am totally Has cool Has disclosure with that. happened? Oh. No. But there will be disclosure tonight when there is disclosure to talk about tonight. <laughs> I hope we can get a back to where disclosure used to be, where stuff was coming on a regular beat. But right now, man, it is so fucking tough out there. I tell you. Shelly, you know what I'm talking about, right? Maybe not. On that note, that takes us back to our dear friend, Mr. Mike, Mike, Mike Disclosure. Thank you for being here for today, my friend. Thank you for everything that you've done and everything you you will be continuing to do because we're not done yet, my friend. No, far from it, Thomas. We're going to come back leaner and meaner, my friend. Oh, we're going to continue leaner and meaner. I, I need to be leaner and meaner, I tell you. i got to drop at least 35 pounds, I tell you. <laughs> Yeah, I want to come back on time. stage like Oprah pulling that wagon of chicken fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wagon of aliens. There we go. There we go. And as we usually say on the end of every episode of Disclosure tonight, eyes open, no fear, be safe, everyone. But go back to Party City where you belong. Absolutely. We'll catch you on the flip side. Good night, everybody. Y'all come back now. Here, love y'all.